family welcome to the channel i hope you guys are having yourself a, a wonderful day in today's video guys we'll be reacting to the indonesian denjaka which is basically their special forces this video was suggested by uh, kens as termakase thank you very much for taking the time to send me a recommendation and a suggestion the video is by uh, ganza channel and the link is in the description in case you guys wanted to check it out so inshallah we'll get started with the video in just a couple of uh, seconds and at the end of the video i'll share with you guys my observation and uh, reaction so if you want to see that then please stay until uh, the end of the video with that said now let's get started ganza channel ninjaka The Jalamankara Detachment to War abbreviated as Danjaka, is a detachment for countering terror, in the marine aspect of the Indonesian Navy. Mm. Danjaka is a joint unit between Kopaska personnel, and the Marine Corps Tafi, Indonesian Navy. Danjaka oh. members are educated at Bumi Mariner Salandak, South Jakarta, and must complete an education called to combating terrorist aspects of the sea. The length of education is six months. Danjaka is devoted to anti-terror units, although they can also be operated anywhere, especially the anti-terror aspects of the sea. Danjaka was so they're like an anti-terror instructions, from the commander of the Indonesian army, to the commander of the Marine Corps no is one p. 4, 1984, dated November 13, 1984. The Jalamankara Detachment, apart from serving as the Marine Corps Executive Command, which is directly under Dan Karmer, is also the main acting commander of the Indonesian Army. As the Marine Corps Executive Command, Dan Jaka has the main task, in building the strength, and capability of the Jalamankara Detachment Unit. Meanwhile, as the main executor of the Indonesian Army Commander, in this case the head of the Indonesian Armed Forces, as the organizing of special capacity building, includes anti-terror operations, anti-sabotage and clandestine operations, Crazy how they wear, like, have all black. Aspects, as well as other special operations. On November 4, 1982, the Indonesian Navy Chief of Staff, formed a task organization called the Special Forces of the Navy, PASUSLA. The existence of PASUSLA, was urged by the need for a special Indonesian Navy force, to deal with all forms of threats from the marine aspect such as terrorism, sabotage and other threats. In this first phase, 70 personnel were recruited from the Amphibious Reconnaissance Battalion, Yuntafi, and the Frog Troop Command, Kopas Troop Command. Command in control of guidance under the commander of the Western Fleet, with the assistance of the commander of the Marine Corps. The Indonesian Navy Chief of Staff acts as operational controller. Headquarters was established at Mako Armabar. Seeing the development and needs of this special unit, the Chief of Staff of the Indonesian Navy, wrote to the Commander of the Indonesian Armed Forces, about the desire to form the Jalamankar Detachment. The Commander of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Indonesia agreed, and since then, November 13, 1984, Danjaka has become a marine aspect anti wow. According to the decision of the Chief of Staff of the Indonesian Navy, Danjaka is the executing command of the Marine Corps, which has the main task of carrying out capacity building and strength in order to carry out anti-terror, anti-sabotage and clandestine operations in the marine aspects at the behest of the Indonesian Army commander. Based on the regulation of the commander, of the Indonesian National Armed Forces, number per paying, 77, X, 2010, regarding the approval and ratification of rank promotions, in a position within the Marine Corps, it is decided that the Jalamankara Detachment Commander has the rank of Colonel. Danjaka's recruitment pattern, started from the training of the para and commandos. One step before entering Danjaka, the selected soldiers must have the amphibious reconnaissance qualification. In carrying out the action, 
this special unit can be moved towards the target either, by surface or underwater or by air. The Indonesian Navy still has one more special force, namely the Frag Troop Command, Kopaska. The two units have conducted joint exercises several times, with the U.S. Navy SEALs. Denjako consists wow. of one Zedent Detachment Headquarters, one Headquarters Team, one Engineering Team and three Combat Teams. As an implementing element, Denjaka soldiers are required to have the highest operational readiness for speed mobility, confidentiality and impromptu, as well as a field of operation in the form yes. of ships, offshore installations and coastal areas. Besides that, he also has the skills to approach targets by sea, underwater and vertically from the air. Each Denjaka soldier is provided with a course on countermeasures against maritime aspects of the aspects of anti-terror and anti-sabotage intelligence, tactics and techniques, fundamentals of specialization, advanced maritime and military command. This course is held every 5.5 months, located in Jakarta and its surroundings. Followed by the material maintenance of skills, and increasing the proficiency of Tafib and Pasco qualifications, maintenance and improvement of shooting, running and swimming abilities, enhancing martial skills, Tactical mastery and secret penetration techniques. Interesting. So the training is done in Jakarta. Mastery of tactics and techniques to seize and mastering installations in the sea, ships, ports or bases and personnel held hostage in vital objects at sea. Mastery of tactics and techniques of clandestine operations in the marine aspects. Knowledge of terrorism and sabotage, defusing explosives and improving survival, escape, deposition. And resistance wow. to questioning. It's a lot of things that they do. Operations, Denjaka personnel are equipped, among others, submachine gun MP5, HKPS G1, Daewoo K7, G36 assault rifles, HK416, M4, Pondad SS1, CZ58, Minimi M60 submachine gun, Daewoo K3, and Beretta, HK pistol. P3 Sig Sauer 9mm. Not surprisingly, among the hundreds of soldiers who participated in the Danjok education selection, only about 50 people were accepted. They will be trained hard at the wow. Kandra Muko Crater in Zichimuto. In previous years, there were often the only a dozen the soldiers top. who had qualified. Those who did not pass were returned to their original Being units the crop, as they after say. <laughs> entering the second selection stage. Not all who attended the education passed. It is possible for some of them to be returned to their units, because they are unable to attend education. Apart from being physically fit, the Denjako candidate is also required to have a high IQ. This is because the elite troops wow. that are often used to infiltrate the operational area must be able to face various problems, both individually and in groups. During his education, the theory in the classroom is only 20%. The rest is in the field, such as forests, sea and even air. They must have the best capabilities on land, sea and air. They are required to be able to carry wow. out secret tasks perfectly. To achieve all that, a very hard and strict education is needed. They must be able to infiltrate by parachuting, move swiftly in the sea with high endurance, and survive on land. They are spotted in the middle of the ferocious Crazy waves in the Danny Yuanyi Sea. Skills. They <laughs> wash away fishing boats. With their hands and feet tied, the soldiers were thrown into the ferocious sea. They must be able to survive and save themselves. Their training was tough. Legs and hands tied can live. Why is that? If at any time the three media soldiers, controlling the land, sea and airfields, were thrown into the sea, with their hands and feet tied by the enemy, they would be able to save themselves. After fighting the big waves in the sea, they are also required to survive in the forest, without the slightest provision. To test their endurance, the chosen soldiers were released in the middle of the forest, only with salt. Drinking water is not allowed to be brought. The rest, find yourself in the forest. The exercise was carried out at a last purvo. There. They are released to train physical endurance, and individual abilities. In the middle of the forest, they have to endure days. 
they often only eat wild animals, such as snakes. If they are able to catch a monkey, that animal is eaten too. For three days and three wow. nights, they slept in the middle of the jungle. Sometimes, too. That's not enough. Regarding hitting by the instructor, to train mentally is not something strange among them. They really have to be mentally and physically ready. So hard, it's not surprising that at the beginning of that education, some people resigned. For aerial training, they were no longer trained in combat like ordinary soldiers. It's crazy. When in combat, as soon as tie their hands and door, feet, throw them in the water, they have to survive. Open. And take However, him to the jungle and let him survive. Trained in free fall. Interestingly, the free fall was not only done during the day, but also in the middle of the night. That way, if at any wow. time they enter into enemy targets, they do not have to go by land or sea that are easily detected by the opponent. Then Jacko can also be lowered from the plane, at an altitude that is difficult for the enemy to detect. In order to avoid detection by the enemy, they had to be good at diving. By using a compass, while calculating the degrees of the target area, the Denjaka must be able to appear at the right point. That's just the training stage. If the inauguration is known as Pemberin, they have to walk day and night. That is often done in Baniyuangi Surabaya. They were released in Baniyuangi, and ordered to gather in Surabaya within a specified time. If you ride a vehicle and are caught by the instructor, you will experience severe punishment. His beret will not land on his head. Oh, no, so they're saying so many people apply, but only like 50 are uh, selected. Uh, you know, they have to be uh, smart, basically high IQ and physically fit and uh, basically there's three areas that they do the training which is the sea the land and the air uh, so the sea portion they tie their hand and feet and throw them in the water and they have to survive uh, the land one is basically they take them in the middle of the jungle and only give them salt and uh, they have to catch whatever wild animal and water find water basically and survive for three days and the air one they say they do free fall during the day as well as at night so they know basically you know looking at compasses and uh, whatnot be able to calculate where they're going to basically jump out of the plane and where they're going to land so the enemy doesn't detect them at night which is crazy so these guys are like the top of the top like the cream of the crop the best of the best you know when uh, anything important comes in these guys are sent there which is crazy it's pretty cool, you know, what uh, uh, they do. And, you know, it's always nice to see it in the movies, right? And uh, here they show a little bit of uh, what they do and how they uh, train. So really, really interesting, guys. Thank you very much for suggesting this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like me to react to another video, you can put your suggestions in the comment section below. As always, Chirmak, I say thank you very much. Shukran, and mercy, guys, for all your love and support. I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and your family. Inshallah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. I said it.